Hi, I'm Ben Kovic from Elevated Trips at elevatedtrips.com, and we are here at Dongguan Dajia, right in the middle of Xining City. We're in the middle of traffic, in the middle of 40-story buildings. We're right in downtown, and we're here at the largest mosque in Western China. Okay, behind me is this cool little advertisement. It looks like some weird worm or something. This is called caterpillar fun fungus. If you're coming to Tibet, this is something you definitely need to know about. This is a source of income, 80 to 90 percent of the yearly income for many Tibetan nomads. And they'll go out in the grasslands and they'll pick this in the summer. They'll pick this fungus, and it's actually called Dong Chong Shotsao, which means winter worm summer grass. The Tibetan name is Yartsugumbo, and Tibetans will go every June, May, June in the grasslands right around 3,500, 4,000 meters. All the kids will actually get out of school on a huge holiday and they'll go out and pick this stuff from the grass. When they find it, it's basically just like a little pencil point sticking up from the grass. I pull it out and each one will sell for between 30 to 100 uh, Chinese yuan. That's about 5 to 15 US dollars. But you have to imagine whole villages are picking bags and bags, kilos of this stuff, and they sell this stuff for thousands and thousands of dollars. This is a big market. Even if you go to Thailand, in the 7-Eleven in Thailand, you can buy this stuff in powdered form, and they either make a tea out of it, or they just put it straight inside water or make a powder. And they use that as, it's an aphrodisiac, but it's also considered a source of health for many different diseases and many problems. And many Chinese believe that this is a kind of a cure-all for uh, a huge number of ailments. So this is caterpillar fungus. We saw this advertisement here and we just thought we'd give you a little quick blip on what caterpillar fungus is. Hey, we're here at Dongguan Mosque. Okay, we've arrived, and this is the largest mosque in Western China. If you're gonna to come to Xining, you got a half a day. This is a great thing to do for one or two hours. It's not, not hugely long. I mean, basically, you walk inside the mosque. Maybe it's a little smaller than a football field in there. Um, it's a pretty big open space. And then you walk inside the mosque, and there's some carpets, which, of course, in that area, only Muslims or practitioners of Islam are allowed to go, but we can go as far as basically that sanctuary and we're gonna check out the inside of Dongguan Mosque. We're 
inside the main courtyard. This is the holy place of the Dongguan Grand Mosque, okay? So this mosque was built in 1038, the year 1038 AD, but the current structure we're looking at was built, rebuilt right around 1949. So this has been destroyed and rebuilt, burned down many, many times over the last thousand years, but the most recent addition has been, is about 70 years old. So two really important features of this mosque, I wanna point out because Xining has traditionally been a historical crossroads of many different cultures. It was a, it was a point along the Silk Road. And to, even today you have Buddhists, Tibetan Buddhists living here, Muslims and atheists all living in the same place. And it's, there's very few places in the world where you have such a diversity of religions all coexisting in the same place. And some points I want to point out about this mosque, of course it's predominantly Islam, but there's some special features that show this sheening as a crossroads of civilization. So here you can see this minaret. These two minarets to my right and my left, both of these minarets uh, have been, or gifts, actually by Kumbu Monastery. That's a monastery with over 800 Tibetan Buddhist monks. It's the, the birthplace of Songkhapa and is considered one of the most holy monasteries in Qinghai province. These two minarets are actually a gift from that, from that Buddhist monastery. Another interesting cross-cultural connection is directly behind me. If you go all the way through that courtyard, you'll see at the very, very top of this, of their worship center, where Muslims can pray and enter, and they, they bow to Mecca. At the very top of that, you have two victory banners, and in the middle, you have that, that golden statue as well. Those are gifts from Labrong Monastery, another very important monastery in Gansu province, over five hours away. So you have these Tibetan Buddhist monasteries that have gifted this very part of Islam some particular gifts as a symbol of coexistence and a symbol of harmony between those two religions. So that's a very interesting point to see that in this, in this, uh, in China's largest mosque, you actually have some gifts from Tibetan Buddhist monasteries. Okay, so we just entered the courts of Dongguan Mosque. I want to point out the characters for you of the mosque. Uh, as you're entering, if you're if you are familiar at all with Chinese characters, uh, you, you probably know the characters for Xining. They're pretty simple. These are written in the traditional characters, but they're actually written backwards because in traditional Chinese writing, they actually write right to left rather than left to right. So they're backwards for our Western eyes. Um, but if you read the characters uh, in the traditional way, from right to left, it says Xining Shi, the Xining City, Dongguan, that basically means East Gate, Qingzhen means Muslim. Dasa, which means large temple or large mosque. And so that's where we are. We're in the Xining Grand Mosque, or the Xining Dongguan Dasa. Let's go in. So you see these carpets here, they actually take these carpets out and they roll them all across this beautiful stone courtyard. Uh, they're kind of closing up shop today, it's almost 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's kind of a, a bit of a rainy, cloudy day, so there's not too many people out. But in the morning, there'll be a lot of people here worshipping, especially at 12 o'clock on Friday. That's the main day of worship. So if you really want to see this place packed out, full of Muslim men kneeling and bowing uh, to Mecca, and saying prayers, then that's the time to come Friday, 12 o'clock, maybe get here a little bit before that, maybe Friday, 11 o'clock. Right now you can see it's not too many people, but that's actually why we like it, because it's a little bit more low key for us.